Online. We are looking at uh, the Kenya Power story, which is top headlines today. But first, let us look at the currency, which held steady on Thursday, ending the session at 83.80.60 to the dollar, unchanged from the previous session. And this was on the back of foreign investor inflows into the stock market, which has maintained a bullish run this year. Looking at the NSC 20, it inched up 0.3% to close the session at 4,900. 117.46 points, which was the seventh straight session of gains. Looking at the all share index, it was up 0.4 percent to 123.35 points, point points. Joining us in studio today, we have Ted Masharia, an investment analyst with AIB. Many thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. The the top story today is Kenya Power, which uh, has seen the government reject its proposal to rise electricity tariffs. Uh, and, and the last time they did that was 2008. Of course, there are losers and winners in this situation. And the biggest loser in this case, of course, is Kenya Power. How bad is this news for the company and, of course, the shareholders? Um, I think it was free PR for the vice president to step in and try and sound the call that most Kenyans had, that oil prices are going down. So there is no real reason for Kenya Power to inflate the prices. So Kenya Power is now forced to live with the tariffs that we had, and we were still complaining that they were, high, they were a bit on the higher side. I think that is a good call, because Kenya Power seems to enjoy some monopolistic advantages in that they're the only supplier we have. So if electricity is cut off when it drizzles, they will have a good excuse, and we might not be able to uh, argue with them a lot. I think they do have some very interesting options th that they are already considering. They are going to lay down a fiber optic cable from Mombasa to Nairobi and they can list that out to internet service providers and that will be an extra Income. revenue stream. But the president and the government in general was acting on the fact that they had already increased wages by 14%. If electricity tariffs were reviewed upwards, that would compound the problem that manufacturers and people who rely on electricity will have going forward. Cost containment will be very hard for them, and our goods will become relatively uncompetitive in the, in the whole region. So in other words, it's good for the economy, but for Kenya Power, they're looking, of course, at ways that they're going to raise capital, because the reason why, they, some of the reasons they gave for the increase in tariffs was additional capital for some of their projects. And we're likely to see them then coming into the market to, to seek funds. I think they should come into the market. The market is very ready for any debt offering that will give uh, relatively high yields. If we look at what happened in Rwanda for the Rwanda board that was oversubscribed eight times over, that is just an indication of the high appetite we have. The macroeconomic climate is now stable, so we're expecting good performance, we're expecting low finance costs. So it will be a good time for Kenya Power to get into the market, be it a rights issue, be it through a debt offering, or through looking for a strategic partner. But inflating the prices just so that their profit margins are maintained is uh, a little bit sad. <laughs> All right. Now, looking at East African breweries, it has uh, attracted a lot of interest from the foreign investors. And uh, yesterday, we saw the stock cross over the three billion US dollar capitalization mark. Of course, they've been oscillating with the Safaricom, which has also received a lot of interest. For EABL, which has now hit a new high of 340 as of yesterday, what is your sentiment going forward? Is it you know, hitting a ceiling, or do we still have room for further gains? Um, we've been seeing foreign investors coming back into the market this month, particularly banking sector, EABL and Safaricom. Safaricom is uh, expected to release their results uh, next week, Tuesday. EABL had slumped a little bit after they had released. Um, they had showed a small dip in earnings for the first half. And after that, the CEO was replaced. Be, whether it was, a natural, it was a natural event or it was an after event, I think that had a small impact on the price. It, it dipped slightly to about 280 bob before foreigners came in. Um, Uganda and Tanzania remain their greatest growth markets. Kenya is a little bit, uh, our growth in, the, in their beer brands has been slower, so they'll be relying on Uganda and Tanzania. Financing costs have come down. They had borrowed from the parent company. Um, plus I think 3.5% on top of LIBOR. 
so they'll be able to manage their financing costs. Foreigners are coming in now, but there might be an issue. We saw uh, a warning statement issued by NSC about a 75% ownership on BAT. So if foreigners exceed that limit on EABL, then perhaps they'll be suspended from trading, demand will slump, and Do the price will... Do you see it will... getting to that point where we are, we're going to have a lot of foreign ownership uh, in that counter? Foreigners are attracted to it because of the high dividends they pay out and that it's a mature company with a s with solid management team. Yes, they might get into, into that problem, but again, because of technology and the times when they are forced to state their ownership, there might be a, a, a small lag, so they might get away with it for some time. But if demand falls on account of foreigners being suspended from trading, mm -hmm. then the price might drop slightly to just below 300 shillings.